Hello there, people of the interwebs. Today I'm going to introduce a new Nuzzlelock, and it's called a Necrolock. Necro is the meaning of pretty much death, and we combine that with lock, meaning this is a Pokemon challenge. Woohoo! Alright, I'm gonna just read off the rules of how this Necrolock is gonna go. This game requires randomization for it to be in effect, so you have to be playing a randomized game like you have to randomize fire red or randomize white or black in order to be able to effectively play this ne necrolock. Alright, our first rule is you have three tries to capture a wild Pokemon. But after the first try, you have to sacrifice a Pokemon. So let's say you have a Charmander and you just ran into a Bulbasaur. You didn't want to catch that Bulbasaur. So you killed it, or you accidentally killed it, but you wanted to catch it, but you still killed it. So anyway, that the that first Pokemon dies. So you're like, okay, but I really want a Pokemon in this route. So let's say you have a Pidgey in your party along with that Charmander. And that Pidgey's at a level 6. You run into a level 8 uh, Scyther. Um, so what you can do is you can catch, you can decide... Um, when you run into that Pokemon, that's when you can decide for the second catch to catch, capture it or not. So let's say we killed it, we wanted to try one more time. So this time you have to announce, okay, I'm going to sacrifice my Pidgey for this next Pokemon I run into. You have to announce that and sacrifice it even if you don't like the third Pokemon you encountered. So let's say we encountered uh, Entei. We definitely like that, so we're going to catch it and sacrifice our Pidgey. But in the case of if we killed it or didn't want it, we'd still have to sacrifice our Pidgey. Or Charmander or whoever. It has to be within um, five levels in order to sacrifice that. Okay. Um, our next rule is if a Pokemon dies, it's dead and you have to put it in the box. You should put it in a box because of... Um, one of the next rules, so just don't release it, put it in a Pokemon box that you've named, like, Purgatory or something. Something that holds your dead Pokemon, but you can't use them at the moment. Um, you do have to nickname all your Pokemon. Example would be if you got a Chimchar. Okay, let me rephrase that. You have to nickname all the Pokemon by their type. So, if you got a Chimchar, you'd name him, like, Blaze or Flame, or... Because he's a fire type. If you got a Bug, you can name him, like, Bugsy... Yeah, but you have to name it with the type of the Pokemon that you have. Okay, and ro here's a third rule. This one's very... or This is our fourth rule, and this one is very important. Okay. Right after every gym victory, you have a choice of sacrificing a Pokemon within five levels of the one you want to revive. Or none at all. This includes box Pokemon, and it's void if you run into any po Pokemon battles after that gym battle. So let me explain this. Um... After you beat a gym leader, you want to run off to the Pokemon Center. Um, you have a choice of, let's say your Entei died in that match, so you have another Pokemon, let's say you have a Metapod at level 9, and Entei's at level 10, so that's within 5 levels, and that can be within 5 levels lower or higher, so anything within 5 levels lower of 9 and higher of 9. Um, and you have to go in and revive him instantly. So if you run into a Pokemon battle, if you go anywhere else besides straight to the Pokemon Center and activate like a scene or something, then that rule is void and you won't be able to do that again until next gym. Okay, here's our fifth rule. If you defeat your rival without losing any Pokemon, you can revive one Pokemon for free. So that just means you defeat your rival, you go straight to the Pokemon Center, you don't, you can't um, go into any battles again, you go straight to the Pokemon Center, and you can revive one Pokemon for free. Alright, you can catch legendaries, but they equal two party boxes, so you have your legendary, and then you have two boxes that cannot be filled. So that would equal pretty much three boxes that you can't use, so then you'd only be able to have two more Pokemon. Or three. Yeah, anyway, you will figure it out. And le legendaries have no level restrictions for revival. 
and that would be coming up on our final rule. Um, pretty much that means if you catch a legendary like Entei, let's say your Charmander ends up dying, and you really want to get him back, so you sacrifice Entei in order to get Charmander, but let's say Entei is at level 10 still, but Charmander was level 25. Um, legendaries have no level restrictions, so you can sacrifice in between them. But once you sacrifice a Pokemon, it cannot be revived, and that's when you have to release it. That'll be the next rule. Um, so if you sacrificed a Pokemon, then that Pokemon, so we sacrificed Entei, so that Pokemon has to be either put in a box that you can totally not touch, or you release it. But it can't be um, used again at uh, any level. That pretty much means he's totally dead in a way. And, you know, that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed these rules. Um, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Me and my fiancé are going to be starting a Necrolock here soon. We're going to do a co-op for Fire Red and Leaf Green. So we're going to try it out and see how well it works. Um, we both combined this with our thoughts. Um, he pretty much came up with most of these rules. And then we just kind of added on what we both thought would be cool and have be fun. So... That's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe and I will see you next episode.